Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to give you guys my TBR for, I don't know, I don't know if I can finish all these books in a month, so I'm not gonna say for the month, maybe for the season. I have my laptop out today because I'm going to talk about the books more in depth. I usually don't read the synopses before I read a book because I just like going in surprised and not really knowing what's about to happen. But today I'm going to be a little bit better and kind of read the synopses for you guys so that you can get interested in it as well and read along with me. I will tell you that some of the books on this list I have already finished and have already read. I'll still tell you about them because they were intended to be in this video. And then the next video I will make after reading all these books will be a review of all these books or maybe I'll do half of these books and do a review on them because it is quite a bit of books and I feel like a TBR is shorter but a review would be a lot longer so maybe I'll just split it into two parts where I'll do half of the books um, after I read them I'll review them and then the other half read and review. The first book I'll talk about is A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. I originally wanted to read this book because I love Ernest Hemingway and I love his writing. I think that he is such a descriptive and beautiful writer but I definitely wanted to read these two next stories because of a challenge that I saw online. I'm not gonna link it because it's over with and I'm just choosing to read these books still because I just want to read them. A Farewell to Arms is an unforgettable story of an American ambulance driver on the Italian front and his passion for a beautiful English nurse. Set against the looming horrors of the battlefield, wary, demoralized men marching in the rain during the German attack on Caporetto. The profound struggle between loyalty and desertion. This gripping, semi-autobiographical work captures the harsh realities of war and the pain of lovers caught in its inexorable sweep. Ernest Hemingway famously said that he wrote this ending to A Farewell to Arms 39 times to get the words right. I think the ending line is a little dramatic but I definitely can see that happening. Personally I never know how to end my stories so I tend to just leave it very vague but I know that not a lot of people appreciate that so I can see why Ernest Hemingway would want to write his thing like plenty of times. The next classic novel I'll be reading is Once There Was a War by John Steinbach. This one also has to deal with the war. I picked these two because the reading challenge had a lot to do with war and stuff like that and you know history and I really enjoy reading about things like that so I decided to also read this one. I am not that big of a fan of Steinbach. I think that he has a beautiful way of writing detail but sometimes when I'm reading it it gets a little bit too too detailed if you know what I mean. Like there's a lot of lack of plot sometimes to kind of create more setting. So this one says, In 1943, John Steinbach was on assignment for the New York Herald Tribune, writing from Italy and North Africa and from England in the midst of the London Blitz. In his dispatches, he focused on the human's scale effect of the war, portraying everyone from the guys in a bomber crew to Bob Hope on his USO tour and even fighting alongside soldiers behind enemy lines. Taken together, these writings create an indelible portrait of life in wartime. This one seems like it's going to be less of a story and more so of kind of documenting how real war is. And I think that it'll contrast a little bit from Hemingway's kind of romanticized and novelesque way of writing about the war rather than writing about like documentation and like specific events and how things actually went down which I feel like will be Steinbach's approach more so I think it'll be fun to kind of compare the two so I'll be reading those ones back to back just so that it's more fresh in my mind and those two books will also be read on Libby so if you want to read along with me definitely get it on Libby or I feel like you could find these easily at a reused bookstore but for some reason I haven't found it yet so so if you can't, you got Libby. And I feel like it's so old to the fact that you can find it as a PDF online too, but I don't prefer reading things that way. I prefer to just do it on my iPad on Libby. So now we're going to go to the next few books. Um, these ones are also going to be on Libby. I don't have the physical copy with me. The first one I want to read is Fleabag. It's going to be The Scriptures by Phoebe Waller-Bridge. I really love the show Fleabag and I had no idea that she kind of wrote like a play 
gray version of Fleabag, which is what Fleabag was intended to be, I guess. And I just really wanted to read it. I think it's interesting that she says the scriptures because season two has a lot to do with religion and, you know, just the paradox of like love and religion and how like your love for something can be seen as a bad thing in another light. And I just think it's really interesting or it has a lot to say with the human condition and love in general and how women carry themselves in this world realistically and how they deal with men and their love life as well. I think it'll just be interesting to uh, read and see more. I think I wanted to read the script for the longest time, but I just never got around to it. I don't read scripts often, only on shows or movies that I really, really, really love the writing for. And Fleabag is definitely the show that I love the writing. It's like mainly what is for me. So the next book is called The Carrying by Ada Limon. This one is going to be a poetry book. I don't read poetry as often as I'd like, but I definitely wanted to kind of diversify my poetry reading and I think Ada Limon is a good place to start. The synopsis for this one is vulnerable, tender, acute. These are serious poems, brave poems, exploring with honesty the ambiguous moment between the rapture of youth and the grace of acceptance. I think that is such a beautiful way to put something. A daughter tends to aging parents. A woman struggles with infertility. What if instead of carrying a child, I am supposed to carry grief and a body seized by pain and vertigo as well as ecstasy. A nation convulses. Every song of this country has an unsung third stanza, something brutal. And still, Limon shows us as ever the persistence of hunger, love, and joy. The dizzying fullness of our two short lives. Fine then, I'll take it. She writes, I'll take it all. I think that's beautiful. I don't think her writing is like going to be extremely out there. I don't think it's going to be confusing. From what I've seen so far, I feel like it's a very easy to understand and easy read, but it, maybe it carries a lot of themes within it still. Not all poetry has to be confusing and convoluted and full of allegory to understand and be good, but um, that's the poetry that I tend to read a lot and I think that she would just be kind of different for me and just a easier read for me in general and maybe I can get more into poetry in general. Yeah, so I'm excited to read that. I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be heartwarming and maybe a little bit painful at times for sure but overall I think it will be good. All these books so far are kind of sad and like they have a theme to them. I'm hoping that there are happier ones later on but knowing my book taste they probably are not. And speaking of not happy the next book I want to read is My Year Rest and Relaxation by Otezo Mosfe. I know a lot of people love this book. I have actually read it before and I enjoyed it a lot. It's just that some of the I think it took me a long time to want to reread because of the things that it deals with in the book and for my own personal life it kind of it kind of hinders me more than it helps me and so I really have taken time to reread this book although I love it a lot I have given myself a lot of grace because of the things I've gone through in my lifetime and dealing with my own mental health it's hard for me to read books like this that deal with mental health and deal with just the inevitable feeling of constant pain and constant worry per se I would say and I think it's just time for me to reread it because I think now I'm in a better headspace where I can appreciate this book more than kind of see it as like a way for myself to be enabled by. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense. I will still read the synopses for you guys though. Our narrator should be happy, shouldn't she? She's young, thin, pretty, a recent Columbia graduate, works an easy job at a hip art gallery, lives in an apartment on the Upper East Side of Manhattan paid for like the rest of her needs by her inheritance but there is a dark and vacant hole in her heart and it isn't just a loss of her parents or the way her wall street boyfriend treats her or her sadomasochistic relationship with her best friend Riva it's the year 2000 and a city a glitter with wealth and possibility what could be so terribly wrong my year of rest and relaxation is a powerful answer to that question through the story of a year spent under the influence of a truly mad combination of drugs designed to heal our heroine from her alienation from the world Mosh Faye shows us how reasonable, even necessary, alienation can be. Both tender and blackly funny, merciless and compassionate, it is a showcase of the gifts of one of our major writers working at the height of her powers. Sorry if I read that um, kind of weird. My eyes are like, I've been staring at a screen all day, so like my eyesight is, is kind of deteriorating and I've also been talking all day, so my voice is kind of deteriorating. I, I just don't have that much energy right now. I think I'm, I'm going through it, okay? The next one I will be rereading is called Hail by Vladimir Nobukov. I read the 
this a long time as well but um I feel like I read this in college and I didn't really understand it nor did I like appreciate Nobukov that much but I think after um, reading some passages in Lolita and reading some passages from Pale Fire it just made me want to read Pale Fire again and um yeah I really I do love Nobukov as a writer I think he writes beautifully and I think it's very unique I don't think I've seen anyone who's written like him it is all very structured in a way that it is not as understandable and not catered towards a mainstream audience I would say if you've read Lolita and you don't like Lolita you probably just won't like Nobukov in general and I will read the synopsis for you it says the American poet John Shade is dead his last poem Pale Fire is put into a book together with a preface a lengthy commentary and notes by Shade's editor Charles Kimbote known on campus as the great beaver Kimbo is haughty inquisitive intolerant but is he also mad bad and even dangerous as his wildly eccentric annotations slide into the personal and the fantastical Kimbo reveals perhaps more than he should be I think it's just interesting I love the structure as most people love pale fire for I think it's really cool and yeah I just want to reread it I think that's it for my rereads for this TBR and now I'll move on to more um just one there's one more book that I will be reading on Libby and it's called Ada or Ardor a Family Chronicle by Nupkov as well I just wanted to read this one because I never read it before and I think it would just be interesting to read it's a really big book so I heard it was really good too so I will read the synopses for you published two weeks after his 17th birthday Ada or Ardor is one of Nobukov's greatest masterpieces the glorious culmination of his career as a novelist it tells a love story troubled by incest yeah of course Nobukov um but more it is also at once a fairy tale epic philosophical treaties on the nature of time parody of the history of the novel and erotic catalog Ada or Ardor is no less than the superb work of an imagination at white heat yeah I just I know I know Nobukov is like very strange he just does a lot of things that make people worry he can write whatever he wants and I want to read it because I think he's a really good writer the next books are all books that I physically have so I'll be physically reading them and I could show you guys the physical copy except for the first one because for some reason I can't find it and it's nowhere to be found it's called The Liminal Zone by Jinji Ito it is his or manga and yeah it was really good it's just like a bunch of short stories yeah I won't really read you a synopsis because they're all short stories but just know that I'll be reading that I just use him as kind of like a break in between reading because because reading manga for me is kind of like more therapeutic and more entertainment. I just usually read his little stories to kind of get me through my reading slump. I actually already read The Liminal Space. I will give a review in my next coming videos about it. So if you want to hear what I thought about it. But the next book that is on my TBR and that I already finished is On Beauty by Sadie Smith. Sadie Smith is one of my favorite authors. I think the way she writes is so intelligent and so interesting. I love how in-depth she gets with characters and how she writes characters so realistically and flawfully and still somehow wanting to root for them I don't always want to root for them but I think that she writes it in a way that becomes very empathetic for her characters who kind of don't always make the best decision but I'll read you guys the synopses to see if you guys want to read it as well it says Howard Belsey a Rembrandt scholar who doesn't like Rembrandt is an Englishman broad and a long-suffering professor at Wellington, a liberal New England arts college. He has been married for 30 years to Kiki, an African-American woman who no longer resembles the sexy activist she once was. The three children passionately pursue their own paths. Levi quests after authentic blackness. Zora believes that intellectuals can redeem everybody, and Jerome struggles to be a believer in a family of strict atheists. Faced with the oppressive enthusiasms of his children, Howard feels that the first two acts of his life are over and he has no clear plans for the finale or the encore so it basically is just about this crazy family and their antics honestly they're all in the intellectual realm as well as like looking at race as a very political on a very political scale because their family is half white and half black and so they have to deal with a lot of the somewhat turmoil that comes in with having that type of household it was i will tell you that i really enjoyed the book i don't know 
know if I like it more than her other books, but I did enjoy it for what it was. I thought it was really interesting. I can't wait to read more Zadie Smith. The next book on my TBR is Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. I've never read this book. I hear about it a lot and I know that like a lot of people like it, but I just have never brought myself to read it because I think I have tried reading Murakami many times, but for some reason his writing just does not stick in my brain. I will read it and then I'd be like, what the fuck did I just read? And then I'll try to reread it again. And that was when I was a lot younger and I'm hoping now that I can have more of a developed brain to kind of have the words stick a little bit harder so I can kind of just read this book and enjoy it like everyone else does. If you want to know the synopses, it's about Toru, a quiet, serious, young college student in Tokyo, is devoted to Naoko, a beautiful and introspective young woman. But their mutual passion is marked by the tragic death of their best friend years before. Toru begins to adapt to campus life and the loneliness and isolation that he faces. Naoko finds the pressures and responsibilities of life unbearable. As she retreats further into her own world, Toru finds himself reaching out to others and drawn to a fiercely independent and sexually liberated young woman. I heard that he doesn't write women in the best light, but many men don't and I read them as well, so I think it'll be fine. I've been looking forward to this a lot. And the next one I will be reading is these short stories by Somerset. I think this one will just be also a little break for me from the reading. It, I might take a month to read this just because I want to like kind of delve into it and like reread it maybe and really understand it. I like doing that a lot with like short stories and short books like this. I think this one will be really cool. I just love the cover as well so it definitely makes me want to read it. I know he's a good writer. I've read some stuff from him a while ago and I think it'll just be I think it'll be good. And then another book I would like to read is Marriage a Duet by Anne Taylor Fleming. They're just two novellas I guess in one and yeah I just think this will be really interesting. I heard a lot of good things about this. I love the cover. I'll let you guys know what I think about it. I'm not gonna read the synopses for these ones because the shorter stories I don't really want to read the synopses for because I really don't want to know what they are about so I'm not gonna read them but if you are interested you could search up what it is about. Um, I'm not sure what it's about. I just think it's a beautiful cover and I heard a lot of good things about it so it'll be next on my reading list and then the last book on my reading list I talked about how I don't usually love reading books that are super popular or you know just because it's like extremely on trend to read this right now doesn't mean I want to read it right away I don't really get the FOMO but this book does give me a lot of FOMO and it is only because people say that they cry and that it's like basically trauma porn I basically it's fucked up to say but I really love books like that I really love books that make me sob my eyes out that are super 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 sad super traumatic super fucked up and the book you guys might have heard of it too is called a little life and i've already been reading it i'm like 100 pages in so far so good it hasn't been too sad i mean there's like sad things that happen in it but it's nothing like that i'm gonna cry about i haven't teared up i maybe have teared up a little bit but like i haven't like sobbed or anything but i'm pretty sure i will because i'm a baby i'm not even gonna pretend to be like oh it's because i'm like really hardcore and like i never cry no i cry over everything and I know that I'm gonna cry over this book a lot so I can't actually read it in public but I will be reading it on my own and I'm so glad I have a physical copy this is one of the books that I bought not used because I really 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 wanted to read it and it was not gonna be in the used bookstore okay this book is way too popular and everyone wants to read it so this will be my next read I think it'll take me a while because it is a bigger book it might take me like a full month to read it because um I don't read as fast as like all these other people on here who read like five books a month or 10 books a month I read like maybe one or two or three books a month depending on how fast I'm going and how small the book is. I think this one will probably take me a full month and plus I don't really like rushing through books. I think when you like read books back to back to back and at such a fast pace how are you able to contain all of that information? How are you able to contain all these words? And I will tell you what I do basically to remember what I read. Every time I finish reading I'll give it like a day or two to think about what I read, reflect over it, go back to quotes that I like, go back to passages that I really like and reread them and then I will write a book report, a small book report on it, usually a page or two long. I write a summary based off of my memory of it and then I write the analysis of the book, what I thought themes were, motifs, things like that. And then the third one is my reflection which is basically reflecting on the book, how it pertains to the real world, my review on it, my opinions on it, stuff like that. That's how I kind of remember things that I read more 
more often. And if you really don't know what this book is about, I will tell you. A little life follows four college classmates broke adrift and buoyed only by their friendship and ambition as they move to New York in search of fame and fortune. While their relationships, which are tinged by addiction, success, and pride, deepen over the decades, the men are held together by their devotion to the brilliant, enigmatic Jude, a man scarred by an unspeakable childhood trauma, a hymn to brotherly bonds, and a masterful depiction of love in the 21st century. Hanya Yana Gira, I don't know how to say her name, her stunning novel is about the families we are born into and those that we make for ourselves. Sounds so good. Since I've been reading it, it's been pretty good. I definitely think it's necessary to be this long because I've gotten 100 pages in and still the characters are very surface level to me. Maybe not surface level, but they're just not to a point where I'm like, oh, if one of them died, then I'd be really sad. Or like if something happened to one of them, I'd be really, really sad. But I think it's necessary to have a lot of character development for a story like this. So we'll see how I feel about it. But that's it for my TBR today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and coming here. Okay, bye. I'll see you next time. Mm.